Hi, I'm Glenn Everett, Master of Machines. This episode, we checked out Chris Palazzo's collection and his obsession for black and chrome. Then caught up with Paul Sand to see some incredibly wild builds within his stable. And don't forget to subscribe, like and comment because your valued support helps us keep this show on the road. Now we all have our car collections and have we got an episode for you. G'day Glenn, come on in mate. Thanks Chris, let's do it. So tell me Chris, where did it all start for you with cars? Basically when I was 16, I think driving my mum's statesman up and down the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> it was V8 and yeah, it was, I was hooked. I ended up uh, getting my own statesman and started to do that up and then uh, we went drag racing for a while with my brother in a Topolino. After that, a friend of mine Mario used to run around the neighbourhood in his black hot rod and I fell in love with that and through him I purchased my own hot rod which was a 34 coupe and then built my roadster and since then I sort of caught a bit of a disease called black and chrome. Basically the roadster came about that uh, a few of us took a trip down to Melbourne and a few of the boys were buying cars and stuff, so I ordered a roadster, a roadster body from Juice Customs as well. I had to have a blown Hemi in it, of course, injected. Just so happens that I came across one out of a six second dragster and forgot about building the street one and just polished the, the, that one and threw zoomies on it and it just sort of grew into its own animal as these, these builds do, you know, they get out of control and you just keep, you, you become a slave to it at the end of the day. Chris, you've got a couple of killer Camaros here. Tell us about them. Yeah, I've got a bit of a soft spot for 69 Camaros. This one's a, a nice black RSSS um, done pro touring style. It's got the intro wheels, 427 Ligenfelder LS in it with a Magnuson supercharger on top just for a little bit of extra, you know. It's uh, running quite a bit of the Aeroflow stuff on the engine. Um, red, full red lever interior. Just a nice street cruiser. Yeah, the pro touring theme is pretty popular these days, isn't it? It's effectively an early car with a lot of modern technology put in them, isn't it? Yeah, we all like the modern, you know, air conditioning. You know, it's got to drive properly, steer properly and stop properly, more, than, more importantly. Yeah, you want to have the power there to go, but you've got to make it stop at the end of it. This Camaro looks like it's got a bit of a bad attitude. <laughs> Tell us about yeah, it. Yeah, this one's a, a big block 69. Uh, it belongs to a friend of mine, Daniel. Uh, it's been in here the last week. We've just done a bit of a, an overhaul on it. Uh, it was a little, started with door trims. We've probably spent the last week up until two o'clock every morning redoing the whole engine bay and uh, yeah, it looks killer. So it's a pretty serious engine? Yeah, yeah, uh, it's tough. It's got a Tremec five speed in it and uh, TCI rear end. And there's definitely no holding back with the size of that cowl hood. It's huge. No, <laughs> it's, it's, it's up there. <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> You see this thing in your rear view mirror, you, you, you know you're going to be in a bit of trouble, I reckon. Yeah, <laughs> it, it adds to the mean stand look of the whole car, you know, the stance, the, the cow hood, it, it means business. <laughs> Pretty serious looking rod you've got here, Chris. Yeah, Glenn, this one is probably where it all started. Um, this was the first hot rod. Uh, it used to be orange. Uh, we probably rebuilt it about 10 years ago and put the blower on it, but uh, yeah, it's, it's blown air conditioning. Just a nice, again, cruiser. We've toned it down so that it can be, you know, driven any day of the week to the shops, whatever you want to do. <laughs> toned it down? Yeah, it was making <laughs> a bit... the size of the blower on it. <laughs> it. It was hunting a bit at the beginning, you know. We just <laughs> needed to calm it down so, so it's uh, not a problem to drive anywhere and it would probably run a 10 if you turned it up again. So tell us a bit more about the power plant itself. Small block Chevy? Yep. Uh, started with a world block, stroked out to 427 and then put the 671 on top, twin demons. So it made, I think, 700 and something on the dyno. Wow, that'd be a pretty serious uh, <laughs> a bit of kit in a, in a car of this weight. Once or twice a week we go to work with it and have a bit of fun, you know? That's what I call having fun. <laughs> 67 Fastback Mustang, an iconic shape. Absolutely, mate. One of the, the most beautiful Fords, but uh, yeah, again, I had one before, I had to sell it to buy, me, buy my house, so when the time was right, uh, this one came up and I thought, yeah, it's, uh, it's blown, so it matches the rest of it's black and it matches the rest of the fleet, so, you know, there's some plans for this one in the future, but at the moment I'm just happy cruising it the way it is and, and yeah, again, it's a, it's a good, nice daily driver. Well, there's nothing better than driving a car like this on a sunny day without the roof. 
Mate, another iconic uh, Ford muscle car, you know, like this. There's a theme going here, isn't there? <laughs> uh, again, again it, it was black. I couldn't say no. <laughs> but yeah, no, just a, it's a go-kart on steroids, this thing. You know, it's just beautiful to drive, very responsive. And, you know, on a sunny day in spring, you just, you're out in it, it's beautiful. And what powers this machine? This one's got a Tickford injected 5 litre in it, out of an AU Falcon. And it's running the auto trans, I see, as well? Yeah, yeah, it's got the basically the full drivetrain with a Commodore diff, independent rear in it. So it's got a bit of modern technology and a bit of comfort as well. And <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of a theme there, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> Great collection, and I believe there's more for us to look at. How about we go and check them out? Yeah, let's go. Well, here's the man himself, Paul Sant. Paul, I've heard a lot about you. Tell us about this machine here. It's a 1957 Buick Special. Um, yeah, it's a custom airbag, 24s, big block chev. It's a pretty killer cruiser. Mate, I can't believe how low this thing sits. Surely you wouldn't drive it like that. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> no, it'd be nice to, but yeah, hence the airbags. <laughs> Paul, I see you've got your very own mini-me here with you today. Yes, I do. Um, I've got a couple of boys and they both love cars as much as we do. Awesome. <laughs> yep. Well, how about we check out some more of your builds? Yeah, let's do it. Well, Paul, this car looks very familiar. It's actually one of the cars that was used on the Aeroflow TV commercial. That's correct, yep. Tell us about this machine. She's a beast. Yep, it's a 1956 Chev. It's got a twin turbo big block in it. Soon to be running, hopefully make about 2,500 horsepower is the plan and be street driven. That's, yeah. some, that's some pretty serious uh, horsepower, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, should do the job, <laughs> I think. So yeah. effectively it's a, a Chev, a GM big block platform, is that correct? Yeah, based on a big block Chev, but yeah, it's a dark block, uh, big chief cylinder heads and yeah. All the good gear yeah. and the turbochargers yeah. look huge. Yeah, they're twin 90 mil turbos, intercool is just massive and should be a tough street car. And I would imagine the drivetrain would have to be fairly stout. Yeah, it's turbo 400, sheet metal 9 inch with 40 spline axles, it's got massive Harrop brakes and 20 inch rims and stuff. I think it's a whole package. Hopefully. <laughs> and the yeah. build quality of the car is spectacular. Yeah. How long did it take to build? Um, this car's been in the build for 13 years. Wow. Yeah. So obviously a lot of money and family commitments in between for the owner. And yeah, we're going to get there. Hopefully this year it'll be at Summer Nats um, pulling numbers on the dyno. Well, I love an XY, Paul. And this is an XY with a bit of a twist. Tell us all about it. Yeah, um, we tried to build something a little bit different with this car. Powered by a 572 Hemi with an 871 with a soft tune, makes about a thousand horsepower and gets driven everywhere. Tell us about the build, how long did this one take to build? This one took about two years to build, from start to finish. Customer just wanted a tough street car, wanted a blown Windsor at first and convinced him to do something a bit different. Oh, absolutely, with that engine platform, I mean most people would say, gee, you haven't gone with a Ford combo. I mean, if you put a GM engine in it, you might get a few complaints, but yeah. for some reason the old Hemi, it's, it's accepted, isn't it? It's a, yeah. a, such a, a generalised engine. Yeah. It's a very universal engine. I don't think it's classed as a Chrysler, it's just classed as a Hemi and acceptable by hot rodders, street machiners, anybody in general. Well, the drag racing history, you can't deny yeah, that, can you, really? That's it. The it's the engine of all engines. And is this a car that gets driven much? Yeah, it gets driven quite a bit, actually, and that's what it was built for, even though it's showy, but it is a street car. Thanks for watching, and we'd really appreciate it if you'd like and comment on this video. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the notifications bell because there's a lot more content coming your way.